going to remove the passenger front tire, 19 millimeter socket. To get access to the crank sensor, I'm going to have to go through the fender well of the passenger right front. And I'm going to remove this bra steel bracket right here. There's one, two, three, I think five bolts holding it in, four or five. So let's get to that and we'll go from there. So I'm going to start removing the bolts. I'm also going to take that bolt off of that power steering line just so I can access everything in there. It's a 15 millimeter socket. I'm going to start here at the that line, take that one off. Just follow that bracket right around. There's one down below here. So I loosened up those two bolts going into the block with a long extension. So now I can get my 15 millimeter quickly get in there with these. It's a good idea to keep note of where each one goes. Also, so far they're all the same length except for the line bracket. That one was just a shorter bolt. At this point I'm going to take these clips off these hoses. Obviously, just keep at it till you get this bolt out. One more to go. It's down on the bottom. This bracket is down here on the bottom. Probably get a ratchet wrench at this point. I'm just going to disconnect the harness from this little clip and then I can move this bracket hopefully enough to get it out. There we go. So I'm trying to get everything out of the way here so you can see a little bit better but that's it right there. This connector right here and they wrap the casing around it. That's all mighty nice of them. So with one hand, I have to try to pull this tab out. There we go. Pull that gray tab out because that's a safety lock like that. Then I'm going to squeeze this tab down and pull this off like that. And on the other side, there is a 10 millimeter socket stud that we're going to take out. So this is the sensor and that is the stud that's the nut is part of the stud, so it's just the long uh, bolt with the nut halfway through, 10 millimeter socket. Hopefully it comes undone. I do have to take the camera out in order to get in there, but I want just you to see what it looks like, and then we'll go from there. So I put a deep 10 on with a swivel socket, and I managed to get my battery operated ratchet in there, 3 8 drive, and it snapped free. So I'm just going to Back it off by hand. Let's hope for the best here. Oh, there's the actual stud that came out. Now we got to try to get this sensor out. So I grabbed a pair of pliers. I'm going to see if I can just keep wiggling it back and forth. See if I can get any movement out of it. There we go. 
I'm going to spray some penetrating spray down and see if I can get it to go down to where the seal is. Unfortunately, in the past, I have had situations like this where the sensor itself swells up because it gets hairline cracks in it and the petroleum makes it swell up. So it won't come through that hole. So let's hope that that is not what happened here. Okay, so we've got some penetrating spray in there. Let's see if we can get this to wiggle out a little bit. You can tell I'm going back and forth here because the pry bar has a wedge design to it. I'm hopefully prying it. Well, it looks like I might have gotten it here. Just a little patience. I just hope I didn't crack it. Wow, I did it. And there it is. So before I put the new sensor in, I added a little engine oil, just a little bit of oil to the O-ring because we want that to go in smoothly. And then we're going to put the new crank sensor right in. Push and twist. Okay, it looks like it's flush, but now I need to really turn that so I can get the bolt hole lined up. There we go. Get the stud. Let's see if we can start this from hand. All right, that's a 10 millimeter, so we're gonna put that, tighten that up. All right, so I end up putting a three quarter length 10 millimeter socket on there, quarter inch drive, and uh, now I can tighten this thing right up. There you go, that's good enough. Now I'm going to get the connector, hook up the connector, and put that lock back on, that gray lock tab. Because this is definitely something you don't want to come undone. <laughs> it's not easy to get to. All right, here's our connector. I'm just going to bring that out here so I can put this tab on a lot easier. Get two hands. I'm just going to line it up. There we go. Push down until it clicks. There we go. Push that lock tab in. If it's on there. Okay, now I'm ready to put the bracket back. All right, so the two longer, so you have five bolts total, three of the same size and two of the same size. The two longer ones go into the transfer house, housing style. So I already started the bottom one to hold it in place. So this goes right into the transmission I'm going to put one of the top short ones in over here, hold it in place. Okay, get this one. It's this short one. Perfect. All right, now I'm gonna try to tighten all these up. Let's get the uh, extension, it's 15 millimeter socket. <laughs> 15 millimeter wrench, Except exceptionally long. I'm gonna snug them up. I'm just snugging these up as tight as I can get them. Yeah. 
Okay. Now the only thing left to do, well, a couple things. Got to put this harness back on, connect it with these little clips. Okay. Now put that one last bolt on. It's the shortest one of them all, bolt-wise. Once again, that's a 15 millimeter socket for that. Put the tire back on. We're going to just snug them up, and then we'll tighten them, manufacture specs. Go on a crisscross star form pattern, and we can torque it. So wheel torque is 100 foot-pounds. We're going to do it in the star pattern. Double check. 